What's up guys, welcome back. Yes, it is true. I believe that this option strategy has a 100% success rate and I'm gonna give you all the reasons why. I know there's probably gonna get me some flack and I know that there's gonna be some people that are gonna disagree with me and I'm not saying it can't go wrong, but what I'm saying is that it can have a 100% success rate if you do the things that I'm gonna talk about inside this video. And how can something have a 100% success rate? Well. Frankly, because you have all of the control. You are going to be creating or writing this options contract. You get to choose the price. You get to choose everything, the, you, all of the terms. It's like when you order a slice of pizza. You get to you know shop around and look for the price that you think is right. You call the place that you think is right. You set up an agreement. You guys agree on those terms, and you go with the pizza. You win. There's really no loss for you. The same is going to be happening here. You get to choose the stock. You get to choose the price that you're going to buy or sell, you get to choose everything and are in 100% control. And if you do this and you follow the certain guidelines that fit your investing criteria, this will be 100% no lose. It will be win-win for you. Now, about eight months ago, I made a video about the covered call and I'll admit it was good, but it was not great. There were still plenty of holes inside that video. So like I said, now that it's been about eight months and I have over 300 comments on that video alone, I wanted to remake the video for 2021, clean up everything, so I will leave no questions unanswered. That's my goal, to get through this video and have you understand everything and not be able to even ask a question about it. So we're gonna talk about exactly what type of option this is, the pros and cons of it, how premium is paid, when you get it, when it affects your buying power, how is it taxed, all the things you need to know about premium, the possible outcomes for this trade and how you are going to control all of those and how this is really going to be win-win. I'm gonna show you how I choose a strike price and how you could look at the Greeks to set up a strike price that you think is best for you. Most importantly, we'll talk about how to get out if something goes wrong or if you made a mistake or if you get to feel uncomfortable, I'll tell you how to get out. And then at the end, we'll work through a full example live. I will make a covered call on my computer inside Robinhood in real time and show you exactly how to do that. All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about the covered call. Now, some things about the covered call. First, it is a sell option. So as we know, when we sell an option, we are going to write or create a contract. When we write that contract and we set the terms that we are gonna talk about in one second, we put that contract out into the open market and then a buyer sees that contract, they agree to the terms that we created and to purchase that contract, they are going to give us premium in return. And once that premium, and once that contract is fulfilled by the buyer, you get that premium immediately. That premium goes right into your buying power. So many times I get asked like, where's my premium? I don't see it. Guys, it doesn't reflect your portfolio value while the option is open. So if you're looking at an app like Robinhood and you have your portfolio value and it's got that chart that's going all over the place, it is not going to show up there immediately until the option is over. But if you go into your transactions or if you go into your orders history or if you just look at your buying power before and after, you are going to get that premium immediately. It is yours regardless of the outcome of this contract. You can now take that money immediately and do whatever you want with it. You can make more trades. You can withdraw it. You can live off of it. Just know that it is taxed at ordinary income. So whatever your income, whatever your tax bracket is, that's what you're going to be taxed at on these premiums. Now, during the time of this trade, the general outlook is going to be what we call bearish, right? We don't think that the stock price is going to necessarily drive up that fast or that far, okay? When we are bearish, we kind of think that the stock is going to go down or trade pretty flat. If it trades flat or goes down, we are going to make money in this situation. But this is not going to be done with a stock that you think is going to shoot to the moon. Okay, so if this stock is really volatile, you don't know what it's gonna do, like I said, these are things that we can control, okay? We, we know what stocks are volatile, we know what stocks are blue chip and kinda have steady growth or trade pretty flat. You know, that, those are gonna be the stocks that we're gonna be looking to do this with. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons in a second and one of those cons specifically is the fact that it requires a lot of upfront capital to do this. You need to own 100 shares, okay? But when owning one of those 100 shares, you have to make sure that you are not married to this stock. During every single options trade that we are ever gonna do, you always want to assume that you are going to get assigned. You always want to assume that it's gonna expire in the money for the buyer, but 
we're going to hope for it to expire worthless. So we should never be stressed out. We should never be worried. We should never be like, oh man, that's going to get assigned. It should never ever feel like that because you need to choose one, a stock that you'd be willing to sell off. And we'll talk about, you know, the pros and cons in one second. So you have to be willing to sell off that stock and you have to be willing to get assigned, right? If it's going to stress you out, then you just pick a different stock or you don't do this all together. And I write this last one that you have to own 100 shares of the stock. And I, I say this with a warning, guys. Remember, there are no cheap or expensive stocks in the stock market, right? Stocks have a certain value, which gives their share price a certain cost. So you're going to be in one of two positions here. You're either going to have 100 shares of a stock already, and I'm going to give you a warning about that and the pros and the cons. You're either going to have that already, and then you'll be able to sell covered calls against it, or you're going to be working up to 100 shares. And I think that's really the position for most beginners. But I just wanna say, if you are going to be working up to 100 shares, don't dive into this with penny stocks or stocks that are inexpensive, right? If it's gonna take you like a couple months to build up to 100 shares, so be it. During that time, you'll be able to learn more, you'll be able to craft your skill, you'll be able to figure out ways and strategies to help you succeed even more. Like. I'm just saying, don't rush into 100 shares just to get 100 shares, right? You can go out and find stocks for a dollar, okay? But don't go out and buy those because, like I said, these are not going to be the companies that we want to be doing this particular options trade with. So first, the cons. And I don't really even know if this is a con, but people always say, like, yes, it does require a ton of upfront capital, right? Buying 100 shares of a solid blue chip stock that you think is going to rise steadily over time and you can say that confidently, yeah, it's going to take a couple bucks. Now, there's ways around it with more advanced strategies like the poor man's covered call and things like that. But yes, you are going to need to have 100 shares. The 100 shares is going to be the collateral for this trade, right? We don't put up money in this trade. Right? We put up shares because essentially what we are doing is we are giving the buyer the right to purchase those 100 shares from us if the contract expires in the money for the strike price that we choose. So yeah, we are going to be choosing the price that we get to sell at, but we do not have control of this option once it is purchased by the buyer. Okay, so that lack of control, that could be considered another con. But even though we can't exercise, we can still get out, and we'll talk about that in one second. But it needs to be reiterated that you are putting up your 100 shares of collateral, and if this contract expires in the money, you are going to have to sell those shares to the buyer at the strike price that you chose. The other is a possible capital gains tax. And I'm really speaking to the people that have had 100 shares of a stock for a long time, and maybe they're learning about the covered call right now. There's many people inside my Discord. In my Discord, this is what we're talking about all the time, all day long, if you want to get in that conversation. But we're having people maybe a little bit older that have shares, and they've had these shares for a very, very long time. And those shares have a ton of unrealized capital gains, meaning they haven't sold and they're up. So they have a profit. And they ask me, hey, should I sell a covered call? And I always ask, you know, what are your unrealized capital gains? Because if you have a stock that you've been holding for years and you have thousands of dollars of unrealized capital gains and you choose a strike price that you'd be willing to sell these shares at, you, you have no problem getting assigned. What you need to realize, you're going to collect that premium and you're going to be taxed on that. But in the case of assignment, if you were to get assigned on those shares and you sell those 100 shares, you now also own long-term capital gain tax on those shares that you had to sell. So in some cases, the premium isn't worth it. I've talked to people and heard people, especially with Tesla, that got in on Tesla really early. It shot up and people were like, man, you could be selling covered calls against that and getting thousands of dollars of premium. And for them, it's not worth the risk and return of possibly getting assigned and yeah collecting a couple thousand dollars in premium but paying thousands of dollars more in capital gains tax and like i said yeah that would suck but once again we have the control if we don't want to pay capital gains tax and we don't want that to happen to us we don't do the covered call with those particular shares the number one pro is that you're going to be collecting premium Right now with a small portfolio around seven thousand dollars i'm clearing about twenty five hundred dollars every single month just doing calls and other strategies just like this. 
Sometimes I get a sign and that's fine. Sometimes I don't and that's fine as well because I set the terms. So collecting premium is awesome. It's, it, it's essentially passive income. Once you learn how to do these and you have a formula in place for yourself and you have a strategy in place for yourself, people all the time say it's not passive. You have to do so much work. Well, if you own 100 shares of a company, you know a ton about that company. So doing the research and picking your strike price, it's just as easy as picking an email for me, reading an email for me. So it is pretty passive income. And then, yes, you have to pay taxes on that. People all the time like, yeah, well, there's going to be taxes on that premium. Yes. If you make money in the United States of America, you need to pay taxes on that if you want to be legal. So many people are trying to argue with me that if I, if I gave you a $1 bill but told you you can only keep 80 cents of it, you wouldn't do it. I, I just don't understand the whole tax argument all the time with premium. Oh, you got to pay taxes. You got to pay taxes. It's a pro to make money, guys. The other thing it does is it lowers your cost basis. Now, it doesn't do it automatically in your brokerage. This is going to be like almost an adjusted basis that you'll have to do the math on. But this is a great way to lower the amount of total costs that you've paid for those 100 shares. Let's say you've purchased 100 shares and you got them for $10 each. Well, you just paid $1,000. That is going to be the amount of money that you put up. And your basis is $10 per share. So now if you collect a premium, we'll write this premium 0.1, there's 100 shares in the contract. So this is really $10. We can now subtract that $10 from the price that we've paid. So now the overall basis for us is $990. So now instead of our basis being $10, our basis is now $9.90. And the more and more you do this, the more and more that basis is gonna lower. And one last con that I'm thinking of now that I wrote these out is that th this really has capped profit potential. And this isn't really a con, but it's definitely worth noting in this option, unlike a buy option where the profits are literally unlimited, these are going to be capped and we'll show this later in a profit and loss graph. So here are some guidelines that I look at when I'm placing the trade and I'm going to show you this in just a minute when I do a covered call with Dropbox. So here are pretty much my beginner criteria for placing a covered call. The stock isn't going to shoot up, right? So we know that the stock isn't going to moon. It's not a stock that I'm married to. I have no problem with this thing being assigned. The strike price is above my basis. And I, I want to talk about that a little bit more. We just said that we had a stock price that had a basis of $10. Okay. When you are going to be placing your strike price, and we're going to look at this in the options chain, you want to make sure that that strike price is above $10. Because if it were to get a sign, remember, you have to sell at the strike price that you choose. So maybe I'm like, okay, I have no problem selling all these shares away for $12. That's a pretty nice return. So you are going to make $2.00 per share if this were to get assigned, which is going to be a profit of another $200. If you choose a strike price that is below this, when you get assigned, you are going to take a loss. So this is the first win that we have. We choose this strike price. We choose what our potential profits are going to be. So where this can go wrong right off the bat is if you choose your strike price in the wrong spot. We want the strike price to be above our current basis, and we want the share price to stay lower than this until assignment. If the share price climbs above this, that's when we're going to get assigned, and we are going to have to shell, sell our 100 shares for $12, profiting $200 plus our premium. And the last one is part of the Greeks, guys. And if you don't have a background on the Greeks, you should definitely go back and, and do some research on the Greeks. But for Delta, we are going to be looking for a 0.3 or lower. And like I said, that's just a standard that I like to use. You could choose whatever Delta you want. Maybe your risk tolerance is a little bit less. Maybe you are brand new to this. Maybe you want to choose a Delta of 0.2, okay? What that really is going to tell you in the back of your mind, this is not technical, but it's like kind of just a general rule of thumb that we follow. That's the percent for the buyer that this is going to expire in the money and good for them, okay? So when I choose a delta of 0.3, that means the buyer has a 30% chance of this expiring in the money for them. So that gives us a 70% chance of this expiring worthless. Now, even if it doesn't, right? Even if the buyer wins and that 30% is in their favor, we still win because we got this profit that we're talking about. I said so many times people want to say that the assignment is a bad thing. The assignment is a win for us. We got to sell shares at a price that we want to sell them for. 
I'm also going to choose an expiration date that's less than 30 to 45 days, okay? Now, the reason I'm choosing 45 days is because of theta. And we know that theta eats away at extrinsic value for the buyer. So every single day that goes by, right, theta is going to take away premium. It's going to lower the value of that contract. So if later we want to go to buy to close, which we'll talk about, we want that price to be less. Now, at before 30 to 45 days, premium kind of decreases like this. But right at 30, 30 to 45 days, it really starts to ramp up until we get to expiration right here. So if we choose an expiration that's between 30 and 45 days, we are really going to get uh, theta on our side. And the one last thing that I really want to drive home when we're placing this trade, guys, nowhere in here did I mention that the premium price was a criteria for me when making a covered call. And that is still true to this day. When you start getting involved in picking covered calls due to premiums, you're going to get yourself in trouble because of greed. These are things that we want to keep in our control. Make sure that your criteria and your game plan is set, and then the premium on top of that is golden. There are some times where I sell covered calls and I get like $2 in premium. People are like, why even do it? Why not go closer to the money? Well, the reason I didn't go closer to the money is because that would break my criteria, taking away my win-win, taking away control from me, and really defeating the entire purpose of doing this. So it's better to take less or no premium and wait than to break your guidelines and then get yourself into a situation where we're approaching expiration and you think you're going to get assigned and you're like, oh my God, I might have to take a loss. Like, Don't let premium dictate your trades. Let your game plan dictate your trades and then take the premium as an added bonus. All right, so let's check out the possible outcomes for this strategy. So the first is ideal, right? This contract is going to expire worthless. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the share price at expiration was lower than our strike price. So let's say, for example, we had a strike price of $25 and the share price it ended at 2450. That contract is gonna expire worthless. We get all of our shares back, the collateral. They're no longer tied up as collateral. The premiums are already been paid to us 30 to 45 days ago. So we don't have to worry about losing premium, this, that, and the other thing. Great, the contract's over. On Monday, you get to rewrite another one and start this whole process over again. The second outcome is that this option expires in the money for the buyer and you are going to get assigned. Now, in very, very, very rare cases, will you not get assigned on this if it expires in the money? I, I've never really seen it happen. I know it can happen. People ask me about it, but you can pretty, it's safe to assume if that share price is over your strike price at expiration, it is going to get assigned. Now, can it get assigned before expiration if the share price does climb above that strike? The answer is yes, but I would say 99 times out of 100, you are never gonna see that happen. It's gonna happen in maybe the rare case, but it's not going to get assigned early. It's safe to assume that if it climbs above your strike price, don't be too worried, especially if you're far out from expiration, all right? Don't really worry about that. You might need to worry about it if there's dividends or something like that, these are technical things that go beyond the beginner level, okay? So don't really, we're not worried about assignment, right? Because we're gonna get profit if it gets assigned, but just worry about expiration. If the share price is above the strike price at expiration, you're probably gonna be assigned. So if we have that same strike of $25 and the share price goes to $25.60, you're gonna have to sell all of your shares at $25 to that buyer. Now, people are like, here's, what, I found the, the bad thing. Here's where you lose. You lose because you don't get that 60 cents of, you know, capital gains. That's true. But we're not worried about that 60 cents because we got to choose the price. You can't say that I want a strike price of $25. I'm perfectly happy getting $25 a share and then see it go to $25.60 and be like, well, I really wanted $25.60 for those shares. You broke your criteria. So you lost because you didn't follow right? You didn't follow your plan. That's why you lost. If you're worried about not getting that 60 cents, well, then you better make your strike price higher. There's times where I've been assigned where I'm like, oh man, I could have gotten a little bit more money, but I'm still happy. That's the feeling that you should have. And the last possible outcome, and which is the most common for me, is going to be a buy to close. And this buy to close is essentially going to close that contract out. When you make this contract, it's not between like you and one other person. So when you sell a contract to a buyer, right? You're not... Peter isn't buying that from you. And then if you want to sell it back, you got to call Peter. It's not like that. There's just a pool of these contracts out there. 
So let's say, for example, this contract was being going on and when you bought it, it had a premium of $10. So you sold the contract and therefore you got $10 in your pocket. That was the value of this option at that time. But now it's been approaching expiration. Theta has been eating away at that extrinsic value and you go on and look at the value of this option and right now, today, it has a value of $5 and that's that chart that you're gonna see inside Robinhood if you have this option or any of your brokerages. What you can essentially do is say, wow, sellers are now selling this for $5? I can lock in $5 of profit and not have to worry about assignment. I don't have to worry about anything and make 50%. I'll take 50% profit, right? So what you do now is you would now buy to close this option. So what this would look like is you had a sell at a strike of $25 and at an expiration of let's say 322. Now it's it's March 15th and it's $5. You're like, I don't want to wait till the 22nd. I don't want to give this option any time to not go in my favor. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to buy an option at a strike of $25 with the same expiration of 322. But now because you are buying it, you are going to pay back $5. So you are buying to close. So you collected 10. You're essentially now giving five back, you net five, and that washes the contract and it is no longer in your hands anymore. So if we look at a profit and loss graph of this, all at expiration. So let's take a look at the strike price. If this is the strike price that we choose, if the share price goes above that, this is where max profit happens, okay? And that max profit is going to be the difference between your basis and the strike plus the premium that you collected. Because as we remember, this premium, it offset your basis. So let's say, for example, we had a strike of $20, but we had a basis on that of $15, but we collected $2 in premium. What would our max profit be? Well, we'd have 20 minus 15 is going to be 5, plus 2 is going to be 7. And that's in premium terms. The contract was 100 shares. So this is a $700 profit for you. Now, anything less than that, guys, we are going to expire worthless. And the potential of downside for the stock and these 100 shares you own can go down. But this is the assignment, and this is what we really need to be looking at, what our max profit is. Guys, as opposed to holding the shares at this price, like I said, the only difference, we see this capped profit. If you held the stock and the stock price kept going up like this, we could see, yes, you can accrue capital gains that could go to the moon. But in this case, we are going to be at a cap of profit and we get to choose that profit and we get to choose the price that we're willing to sell it at. Now, let's take a look down into Robinhood and let's make one of these covered calls. All right, so here's the portfolio. Here's the stock I'm going to use. As we can see, I have 100 shares of Dropbox and I I think this is going to trade pretty flat. If we open up Dropbox, we could see over the last month, it's been just pretty much staying exactly where it's at. Nothing crazy going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at first my cost basis. You need to understand what is the value of these. So these cost me $2,379. So that means my cost per share is essentially $2,379. So I have to make sure that when I'm choosing my strike price, it is above $23.79. I'm going to click Trade DBX. And if you're inside Robinhood or your brokerage and you don't see this trade, it's just buy or sell, you have to be enabled to sell options. It's a protection for you. So you just have to write them or email them or click a box and then you'll be able to trade options. So when you click Trade Options, here is going to be the options chain that you are going to see. Here to your right are going to be the premiums and here to the left are going to be your strike prices. So those are the ones you're really going to be looking at. But first, primarily the strike price. We don't care about the premium until later. I'm going to make sure that I click sell. Guys, it defaults to buy. If you're rushing through this and you're excited, you can really get yourself in trouble here. Sell and we're going to sell a call. I want to go 30 to 45 days out. This is coming up pretty soon. So I'm going to do uh, February 5th. 
So this is the new chain for February 5th. I double check again that I am at sell to call. And we remember that I needed to be above 2350 essentially, which is fine. So I'm gonna come up here and say, I'm going to sell as maybe 2550. I'm gonna take a look at the Delta by clicking this box and we see the Delta is 0.38. Doesn't meet my criteria. I don't care about the premium, so I'm gonna go up again, $26. I see that it has a premium of 0.42. I don't like that one either. I see 26.50, that is a premium of 0.3. I might consider it here, but I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna go up to 27, 27.2899. So that meets my criteria. We have 100 shares of a stock, we have a stock that we think is going to trade flat or down but before February 5th. We have a theta that is below 0.3 and it is well above my share price. And I would love to sell these at $27. So what I'll do now is I will click this plus button. It'll tell me the credit of 0.68. This is in terms of a contract, which is 100 shares. So I'm gonna get $68 inside my pocket. I'm gonna press one. Right now this has a bid ask spread of 0.55 to 0.81. So we're somewhere right in the middle of that. If I want this to fulfill quicker, I can give up some money and I can go down to the buyer if I want. But I'm gonna try this right in the middle. You can adjust this price however you want. I'm gonna click review order. It's going to give you the lay down. And once again, another chance to check. You are agreeing to sell 100 shares of Dropbox at $27 on or before February 5th. Like I said, if it gets assigned before, that might happen. If you aren't asked to sell DBX by then, you'll be you'll keep your collateral and the full $60, uh, $68 credit. So let's press submit, and we will wait and see if this gets filled. Sometimes it doesn't get filled, sometimes it does. Like I said, it depends on that bid ask price, but we'll just press done, and then we'll wait for it to fill. This is the long and short of selling covered calls, guys. I hope you'll at least consider it. If you want to learn more about it, guys, inside my Discord, there's over 200 people in there right now talking options. We have chats on every single type of option. Buy, sell, call, cash secure puts, porn. We have it all inside that uh, Patreon Discord group. If you want to dive into that, I'll leave a link down in the description below. I hope you're collecting a ton of premium. Get down in the comments. If you have any questions, if I did miss anything or I made any errors, please let me know and I'll put them in the pinned comments and correct myself. And until I see you guys in the next one, stay positive. Work really, really hard. And I beg you, please just always be kind to other people. Hope you have yourself an amazing day and an even better tomorrow.